throughout these videos which expose the satanic rituals being orchestrated to exalt the devil and his antichrist, we often discuss the use of magic numbers or numerology that are embedded in each event. I want to make it clear that I do not practice numerology. Instead, I am only revealing the application of magical techniques and principles being executed by the malevolent forces instigating these satanic ritual events in an effort to achieve a certain outcome. That being said, I want to make it clear that the use of numbers as illustrative, allegorical, or emblematic representations of some other thing is not inherently evil. Indeed, the utilization of numbers within scripture as metaphorical figures or symbolic representations of various themes, ideas, and motifs is quite evident. I mean, there is an entire book in the Torah called the Book of Numbers, wherein every tribe was numbered. Examples of this can be found in the use of the number seven, which is called God's number because it represents perfection and completion. Revelation 4.5 declares, And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Further, Revelation 5.6 declares, And I behold, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. Moreover, God spent six days creating the heavens and the earth, and then rested on the seventh day. This is our template for the seven-day week observed around the world to this day. The seventh day was to be set apart for Israel. The Sabbath, which is a holy day of rest, as found in Deuteronomy 5, 12 through 14, which declares, Keep the Sabbath day to sanctify it, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thine ox, nor thine ass, nor any of thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates, that thy manservant and thy maidservant may rest as well as thou. In the scriptures, the number 13 is associated with rebellion according to Genesis 14.4, which declares, Twelve years they serve Kedor Laomer, and in the thirteenth year they rebelled. Also, the number 40 often represents a time of trial or probation. For example, the Israelites wandered in the wilderness for forty years. Deuteronomy 8, 2 declares, And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness, to humble thee and to prove thee, to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. Not only that, but Yahushua was tempted by the devil in the wilderness after fasting forty days. Matthew 4, 1 through 4 declares, Then was Yahushua led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. 
But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Finally, we know that 666 is the number of the beast or antichrist as stated in Revelation 13, 16 through 18, which declares, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. That being said, the use of numbers as a symbolic representation of something even more significant is biblical. In fact, the connection between numbers and God may be more remarkable and consequential than you even realize or have ever considered. We know that God is infinite, eternal, and everlasting. He is boundless, immeasurable, unfathomable, and without end or beginning. 1 Timothy 1.17 declares, Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Psalm 145.13 declares, Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and thy dominion endureth throughout all generations. Interestingly enough, in general, the set of all numbers are also considered infinite, boundless, and never-ending because there is no limit to how large or small a number can be. Further, numbers are abstract concepts that do not have a concrete existence because numbers lack a temporal, spatial location. This further serves to connect numbers and their creation by God in the beginning. God created time using numbers in Genesis 1, 3 through 5, which declares, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. We know that the day is divided into 12 hours and the night 12 hours, making an entire day last the duration of 24 hours. Since God is the creator of time, this means that God exists outside of time. Further, God is also not a temporal being, but a spirit as God existed before the temporal world was created. Genesis 1.1 declares, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Further, John 1.1 declares, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Acts 17.24 declares, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Further, John 4.24 declares, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Therefore, neither God nor numbers have any end, nor do they have any temporal spatial location. Now, I am not saying that numbers are God by any stretch of the imagination. However, what I am saying is that numbers 
share a special relationship with God and his creation. Like God, numbers exist independently of whether we are able to perceive them or not. Numbers, like time, were created by God and their existence, which is intricately embedded in the very fabric of reality, proves the intelligent design of all creation. In fact, the significance of numbers in God's creation can be found in the golden ratio, also known as the golden number, golden proportion, or the divine proportion, which is a ratio between two numbers that equals approximately 1.618. Usually, this is written as the Greek letter phi, and it is strongly associated with the Fibonacci sequence, a series of numbers wherein each number is added to the last. Now check this out. When we look up the number 1.618, this is what we find. Strong's Concordance lists G1618 as ectinase, which means stretched out and without ceasing. Remember, I told you earlier that numbers are infinite and without ceasing, and we know that God stretched out the heavens as found in Isaiah 44, 24, which declares, Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb, I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself. The golden ratio, which is sometimes called the divine proportion because of its frequency in God's creation, can be found in the design of galaxies which God stretched forth. The golden ratio can also be found inside of hurricanes. It can be found in the design of butterfly wings or in the shape of a rose. Clearly, this shows that God's use of numbers is inherent in his creation. 